Thought Crimes. Welcome to Thought Crimes, everybody. My name is Prince Motherfucking Solomon in the goddamn building. I'm here with Sincere Ignorance. Absolutely. What's going on, Miss Sincere Ignorance? Nothing much. We're about to get into Freeway. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the rocking area. Yeah. Cops want to shut me down. Hangers want to lock me up. But I know there have been people who've been mad at us in Philly. Because we've been going in on Meek Mill, and rightfully so, going in on Meek Mill. Well, actually, you know, they weren't really... Well, the, the Meek Mill fans were upset about that. But yeah. they were really upset when I was going like this. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Can I borrow a dollar? Facts. Oh, when we keep bringing up, I want to know. Facts. <laughs> yeah, they keep getting mad when I do that with uh, Beanie Siegel. What they fail to realize... Let, let me put this out there first, folks. What you all fail to realize, and I'm, I'm talking about the, the Philly gurus. I'm talking about the brothers with, with beard wax in their beard. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about you, cats. I'm a big fan of uh, 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 Freeway. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You know, I love everything about him as a lyricist. Facts. But some of the things he does is just kind of goofy. Facts, but it's all right. You know what I'm saying? I used to do things like that myself. I used to come back and I laid on the floor, whether Jay was with me or not. Facts. So, the point is this. I'm just having fun. But uh, I'm a huge fan of Benny Siegel. Have not been a fan of him getting knocked out recently, not too long ago. And some of the goofy stuff he said. But I still think he's a dope lyricist. One of the best lyricists we've had in the game. But, to be fair, y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, growing up, I, I was leaning more so towards Freeway. Same because yeah, I thought he had a yeah, better flow. I just loved his energy. Yeah, he definitely put an electric jolt in the uh in the singles yeah and also in his albums but I, what do you think uh before we even really get into his discography what do you think about uh -huh. freeway and, and other rappers really using the moniker of or rick ross you know of course we have the rapper rick ross who've um you know created his name and some of his image out of, of rick ross the you know the drug trafficker and uh, you know freeway is another one who basically he he, he came up with the name freeway Based off of the things he's read about Rick Ross, I mean, I mean, what's different? Uh, this nation has marveled and patterned itself after gangsters. You know, it's been the original gangsters. Some of our forefathers were the original gangsters. Um, it's no different to me with Freeway, uh, aka uh, his real name Leslie Edward uh, Pridgen. It's no different than what he was doing. Then, if you want to go back to Ozzy. Nice. Yeah, Nas or even Ozzy Osbourne. I was going to take it to Ozzy Osbourne oh, when yeah, he was yeah. evoking the spirit of Mr. Crawley, you mm -hmm. know? So, it's, I mean, if people really want to make those arguments against hip-hop artists, then you got to look at all genres. Well, I guess the only difference for Rick Ross, and we talk about the rapper Rick Ross and Freeway and some others, at least they're using black gangsters. <laughs> and I will say that, at least they're not calling themselves uh, Corleone, Fettuccine, Linguini, Pastellini, Spaghettellini. You know, at which yeah. I will say people who didn't like black people. Yeah, yeah. Or just use them for business. You know, the jazz, and blues musicians. We have to be honest with ourselves. There is a, a, a sentiment, a segment in parts of the Italian community, especially with mobsters, where they refer to black people as moolies and mooks and gooks and all that egg, type of stuff. Eggplants. Yeah, egg that plants. one is a funny one. Yeah, you told me about that one time. Yeah, you said you know he's talking about some Italian cat and he was referring to black people as eggplants, but. Yeah, I mean, and it's something that took place in the mid '90s East Coast hip hop scene, which was interesting because the more uh, gangstified rap music became on the West Coast, you know, with the the Bloods and the Crips, and the Nation had never seen anything like that before. It's like the East Coast tried to counter it with some of the mafioso talk, talk that we found, you know, some of the rappers like Nas was talking about, which people got mad at Nas. Uh, on his second album from going Illmatic to uh, the Don Mafioso talk. But I will say this about Freeway. Uh, I just, you know, his first, that, that one joint, that Philadelphia Freeway album, to me. Crazy. Yo, well, it's crazy. It was a crazy album. How, how did you feel? Like, how much did the duo uh, between... Beanie Single and Freeway, how much did you like and did you wish they would have uh, created even more material together? Because I know they met, what, in high school? Mm -hmm. And you could definitely tell that they had that chemistry and energy with each other when it came to their records they were on. And it, it was a lot of magic there. You know? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. How, how do you feel about that? You know, eventually coming to an end. <sighs> well, I mean, I know health wise, Beanie Siegel, he doesn't sound the same. Uh, but then you had that Rockefeller breakup. Truthfully, I used to wish them two niggas would have left state property and just start doing albums on their own. Because, Technically, they didn't need state property because, yeah. like you said, they they were uh, musically and lyrically they were a great duo. Yeah, I mean, you know the the uh, the Oskino dude. Uh, um, what do you talk about? I'm dope, man. Come on, I be putting the rock. Yeah, what do you say? I, th- I don't know. I don't know what people talking about what, what beans. What about beans? Facts. He keeps saying that, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, th- they were actually uh, when you talk about hip hop, they are an extremely underrated dynamic duo. I mean, um, even the joints they did on the Becoming or, and, and what they did on the Philadelphia Freeway and other stuff as well, they had this thing where it was just this real struggle and this sense of hunger between both of them, and you could feel it on the microphone. I mean, what be, before again we get into Freeway uh, by himself? Uh-huh. What other rap duos and, and hip hop do you miss, or those that you felt they had a couple of tracks t- together that could have been uh, a duo? Because I mean, we already know one of the other major duos is Met the Man and Red Man, where they have great chemistry together. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Met the Man and Red Man. I mean, they. I think them boys were really technically born by the hip with each other. Um, I think Snoop and Dre had an all right thing going on, even though I thought sometimes with uh, Dr. Dre, his image could be, or in the earlier years, it was like it was a little cartoonish to me. Mm-hmm. Um, damn. Oh, they, uh, AZ and Nas. Yeah. AZ and Nas. And of course, you know, the illustrious, my favorite duo is Outkast. You know, it's always going to be that. Um, th- there were a couple of them that did pretty well together. There was some joints, 50 Cent and Young Buck had this real crazy chemistry with each other. You know, uh, that one joint they had, Hold On, I thought that was classic. But, I mean, if you go through the list, uh, well, you have EPMD, dope group, uh, a dynamic duo. But I think Beanie Siegel and Freeway, definitely underrated. In fact, people don't even bring them up as a duo. No, you're right, even though they've collaborated on a lot of singles together. Right. Right. Wait, well, who do you feel was some of the worst duos or the, the worst be, chemistry? I'm gonna be honest with you, Remy Ma and and Fat Joe, they do have chemistry together, but I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't feel lyrically they are close enough where it really takes the track to another level. It's weird because I think Fat Joe back in the days of Big Pun really put more of an emphasis on his his lyricism. And I, it's weird because they had a lot of chemistry together, mm-hmm. you know. I, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Remy Ma and Fat Joe doesn't they don't have as much chemistry as people think they do. Because if you listen to Fat Joe with Big Pun, even though Fat Joe, of course, weren't lyrically on Big Pun level, it was always a great duo because Pun will be rapping fast, and then Fat Joe would just be like, "Uh, yeah, take it to the back of the trunk," you yeah. know. He well, slowed yeah. it down. And, and they had a great relationship. Well, I, I liken it to uh, a boxer with, with Big Pun and, and Fat Joe. Big Pun was that right that you knew you had to duck. But Fat Joe was the left you didn't see coming. There you and, go. That's a great analogy. And, I mean, even Fat Joe, he held his own with uh, Big L. I think, personally, Fat Joe was a way better rapper in the mid-90s and the agree. later part of the what, 90s. What do you think happened there? Do you think, you know... Fat Joe's just happy just you know what he looks like he don't care about competing like that anymore he looks like he just became a father you know a family man Don Carter Gene ages, you know what people you know. can say about Jay-Z right to yeah. his, his lyricism as well it happens to all of them some of them do it quicker some of them are much more graceful with their uh, decline lyrically uh, and then some of them is is just bad, like what we're seeing with Kanye West. But it's for other things outside of you know the actual music is his mental health. But I mean, even some of the the bars he's kicking out, uh, Jay Z, it, it's more of a graceful decline in his lyrics. Nas, he just he's hungry whenever he feels like he just turns it on and turns it off. You know, some days he feels like rapping about bullshit, and some days he feels like bringing it hard on a, a, a trap instrumental like March Madness remix uh, with. Fat Joe is it's been actually more of a quiet, graceful decline in his lyrics. Yeah. Know? I mean, I know a lot of people still like Fat Joe. I like him as a person. And I, yeah. I'm not saying he's trash lyrically. 
I just understand that he doesn't he he doesn't have that chemistry. I don't think he can ever have that chemistry that he had with Big Pond. And then when it comes to his lyricism, at the time where people were kind of joking about him, he was actually in his prime lyrically. He, I liked him. He was getting he was getting he was getting busy. He was getting busy uh, uh, with uh, DITC uh, digging in the crates crew. Uh, he was getting busy again with Big L. I mean, even if you listen to the old Jay Z Big L freestyle, Jay Z sounded like a, an incredibly different hungry MC. Um, with, with with Fat Joe, I personally feel that him with Remy Ma, it's digestible. But I think Remy Ma and Pat Pooh should have released Plato Palma together. Like that should have been their album as a collective because they got far better chemistry than uh, Fat Joe and Remy Ma. Like you know, what I'm saying. In fact. Before you, uh, before I say this to end on that note, uh, I forgot about Jada Kiss and Styles P. I was about to say that. <laughs> That's what I was about to interfere. I was oh, about to interfere. Our interject. chemistry. That's yeah, our yeah. chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, since you verbally said it first. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, actually, Jada Kiss. And Styles P, especially shootouts. Oh my God, that's one of my favorite ignorant ass songs to ride around to. I just love the way the track comes on. But also, Jada Kiss and Benny Siegel had a, 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 a dope chemistry, and Benny Siegel had great chemistry with Styles P with You Ain't Ready for Me. No, I definitely uh, agree with you. You know, um, in fact, it would have been really crazy if they all did a group together. Yeah, in fact, uh, include Freeway in there. Yeah. I think Styles P is one of the few dudes he can damn near bounce off anybody. Him and Method Man, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I think uh, going back to Freeway, we got we got all over the place. But it's still weird because it's all a continuum with that type of music. But uh, what was some of your favorite uh, Philadelphia Freeway joints? Well, of course, one of my favorite uh, joints from Freeway had to do with the whole beef with Nas. You know, I, I like that whole <laughs> I'ma be honest because yeah. because it was like beans and freeway, they really took what Nas did to heart. It was cute. And, and they were getting turned up. <laughs> so that's that's to me. I mean, even feeling in the air where I mean I know that was a Benny Siegel joint, but there was there's a version of it where Freeway is on it. I thought mm-hmm. that was great too because I, I think wait, was it after filling in the air or no, no, no. I think there was another joint where everyone thought uh, Benny Siegel might be gone for good because he was having uh, issues with going in and out of jail. Mm-hmm. And him and Freeway came out with that hot joint that did really well. Mm. Uh, well, I know with, with the the becoming uh, that was a it was a pivotal album. It's crazy because people consider it a classic now, but when it dropped, everybody was complaining it had too many features. I remember, and uh, I think. With, with Freeway, um, one of my favorite joints he had was uh, You Know You're Wrong off of Philadelphia Freeway. Free at Last was dope as well. Um, Philadelphia Freeway 2, it was solid. Uh, and Diamond in the Rough, uh, it was it was a pretty decent one. And he had some joints with Jake One. My thing about uh, Freeway, though, going back to your point, if you think about it with the Nas and Jay-Z battle, because people forget to me now, I think if you're talking about who, who had stronger bars as far as a battle, that battle between Beanie Siegel and Jada Kiss was like far more entertaining. Oh, it, yeah, definitely, it you, definitely was. It was far Some more funny shit. Yeah. And uh, I remember when uh, when Nas said what he says, uh, hit the freeway, uh, well, eat beans first and then hit the freeway fast or something like that on that mm-hmm. Steelmatic freestyle. And I thought that was funny because when I heard Freeway responding, I was like, oh, okay, he's not afraid of getting into anything. And again, to me personally, Steelmatic is my favorite album uh-huh. from Nas. You know, after that, it goes into, it was written, Illmatic and all that, but my favorite album from, from Nas is Steelmatic. Mm-hmm track after track after track including the videos that were attached to those he created videos for i thought it was a perfect album what did you think about braveheart party with uh, mary j blige which eventually it was removed because from the album i believe at the time she said because she was friends with both Nas and jay-z she didn't want to come between them well the interesting thing about mary j blige i'm glad you brought that up man she had a lot of chemistry with a lot of people yeah 
She had chemistry with Method Man. Uh-huh. She had chemistry with Nas, with Jigga. I think, damn, I mean, mm-hmm. Mary J. Blige was just the perfect vessel of hip hop. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. And I think that track that unfortunately wasn't on the album because of like the situation that you said, I thought it was a, a dope ass track. Um, I mean, but yeah. can anyone name any whack track that from, from Mary? That yeah, that Mary gets started with a rapper on. I can't. Maybe the one with Drake. Yeah, I was about to. You know, <laughs> oh shit, I forgot you, about that yeah, one. I was going to go take it there. Oh wait, and I got one more thing to say that's contra- maybe controversial though. Okay. I think Drake had great chemistry with Rick Ross. I, agree I, with I think you. they could have been a duo. I agree. I agree because in fact. Uh, there's a verse from Aston Martin Music that they eventually took off because Drake's verse was stronger than Rick Ross. There's also singles like I, I know this is not the name of the song, but like "Tattoo My Name on Your Face." There was that's, there's a track that was on the extended work version of "Take Care" with Rick Ross and Drake, and man, the chemistry with them was great. Um, it, I to be honest with you, it, it was unfortunate what took place, but I, I really think that Rick Ross and Drake. Should have done a lot, uh, maybe even an album together. They could have, and I, I think Rick Ross and Freeway had a dope chemistry as well because they had a song together. Um, this was right around the time when Fifty Cent was kind of getting in the way with the whole Benny Siegel and Freeway thing, uh, and he was still taking shots at Jay Z. But I think personally, Freeway. Lyrically is sub- he's like supremely underrated because he had he can come up with great concept albums. To me, he let's take somebody like Talib Kweli, mm-hmm. like his music, but I always felt this is how uh, the level of underrated uh, as far as Freeway is. He has better narration skills than Talib to me, which more than likely um, Talib will agree to. He said he had issues with uh, with concept at times and in, in narrating. Yeah, so. You know, Rick. I mean, uh, Freeway definitely is a is a great MC. They had a, when it comes to those two things. They had a rapper. I uh, remember his name. What was his name? Donnie Goins. And mm-hmm. He had an album called The Breakfast Club. There was a feature Freeway had on there. And he just like stole the show. And that was like every time I used to listen to the album, that was like that was always the first song I would go to. Yeah, I mean, well, the best also to add to that, the best. Moments, I guess, for Freeway as well as when he was signed to Rockefeller and also Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. Uh, yeah, I, I think Cash Money, Sayers. yeah, Cash Money was irrelevant though because yeah. he was on there briefly and then he got out. But I don't think they could have done anything with him. And he, I guess, you know, it, it just wouldn't have been a good look. Rhyme Sayers, Rhyme Sayers has it, it, yo, Rhyme Sayers was an incredible, dope record label. They had an awesome roster. I mean, uh, I believe. From POS to MERS at one time, because I know MERS eventually went down with Tech Nine and uh, Strange Music. Atmosphere, who's still doing his thing, Brother yeah, Ali, who's fucking dope, Brother, Brother Ali. Ali. Yes, he just released Ali, like yeah. a, something not too long ago. I, I love Brother Ali's music. Yes. I think he's definitely really creative as well. Mm-hmm. Concept included, like we was talking about, Sarak. Yes, she is dope. Incredibly talented. That's what I said. Rhyme Sayers has got one of the cleanest record labels <laughs> yeah, right you now. You got Alchemist and stuff. I mean, I, you yeah. know, it's the roster was just definitely crazy. And like you said, you know, during the uh, particular time, mm. you have. You had MF Doom, yeah. Freeway, Mr. Dibs, like, come on. Well, yeah. Very underrated. Yeah. Very yeah. underrated. Uh, they even had, uh, yeah, so you had people like Evidence. And Evidence to me, Oh my god, he's a, he's another cat that I can just you know ride to. You know, uh, I love the the layover uh, EP, uh, which was really dope. But yeah, Rhyme Sayers did a lot of wonderful things, uh, and you know that's why I get tired of people keep talking about mainstream hip hop. Like when you have a record label like Rhyme Sayers, uh, Sayers, excuse me, even with Strange Music, and and I love right now the lineup J. Cole got with his team, you know, with, with G.I.D., uh, with Earth Gang. I mean, like, you, you on your bullshit if you can't find good hip-hop music. And, you know, we probably should make another video also on Minnesota music when it comes to hip-hop because people don't forget, you know, uh, Rhyme Sayers did come out of Minneapolis, mm-hmm. and, you know, it was founded, of course, in 1995. And, and it's something, it's, again, like you said, it was a dope, it is still a dope label. And it's located Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> one of the greatest musicians ever come out of Min- uh, Minnesota as well, Prince. Yeah, but um, let's get back here uh, with, with Mr. Freeway. Look, my thing is this, though. Do you feel, do you feel personally, because everybody keeps talking about, I personally feel Benny Siegel got his due in hip hop. As far as the respect, you know, because people will mention him. He's in the space of uh, like with the likes of of. Um, let me see. I, I don't I don't know if I would say Scarface. He was. Let's be yeah. real. No, it was, it was until oh. he got knocked out. Yeah. He wasn't in, in that place with those people. Yeah, he was. But I was going to say also they, they had a great chemistry, too. So Scarface and uh, Beanie Siegel. But I will say this. I think. If you're talking about what is actually underrated, I think, you know, Freeway is underrated. Because uh, to me, he is. When, when somebody says, like, this particular rapper is underrated, and I look at them, and did I see that they have a bunch of try to mainstream attempts at pop doo success? Then I'm like, <laughs> nah, he, he ain't underrated. He just made shitty music. Mm-hmm. But if you go through Freeway's discography, he never tried to jump into the mainstream like that. No, he was just there though. Because at that time, <laughs> he was just there. No, he was just there. I mean, if, if we're talking about hip hop music at that time, he, he was just there with the music with State Property, uh-huh. and, and again, he was just they were charting at yeah. that particular time. Also, Just Blaze, man, gotta forget. If we're talking about you know like Metro Boomin and Future, and also some other rappers where, as a producer, there's great chemistry there. If you talk about Just Blaze and even Swiss Beats when it came to Freeway and Beanie and the rest of them, that was uh, some some great instrumentals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, one of my favorite joints that uh, that Freeway did it was the Stimulus Package. That's the one I was talking about with Jake One, mm-hmm. and he he had some crazy flows in there. Also, the shit he did with Static Selector, like I, I think I think you know. Freeway, he's one of those dudes that when you think about it, and if you're a, a true hip hop connoisseur, then you're like, damn, he actually did a lot of my favorite joints. He did. <laughs> like you said, he's just he was just there all the time. <laughs> he was, and and it's sad, like you said, it's really sad that he's overlooked if we if we talk about the history. In fact, the only time Freeway is brought up is it is through Benny Siegel, <laughs> you know, and it, and he doesn't get the credit that right. he should get. Yeah, just basically within hip hop on his own. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy is again he's he's a dope hip hop artist, and um, sadly I think currently he's suffering from kidney issues allegedly. Yeah, he's been suffering. He's been having some health issues for the past couple of years, and I. He, you know, they said it about Common. You know, he's one of those artists. You know, those rappers. If he's gone, then we're really going to understand his presence. But people, like Common, people respect. First yeah. of all, Common got a damn Oscar. He in <laughs> movies. He's in TV shows with his light bulb head. Yeah. Who, who's gonna forget about Common? <laughs> You know what? He's he's etched forever for winning an Oscar. Yeah, so I, I get tired of people. They like, oh, comments so underrated. I says, nah, that nigga had a good career. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, and he's still having a great career. <laughs> yeah, and um, he's sitting on fucking Wendy Williams' couch. Freeway ain't, <laughs> you know. But Freeway is one of those cats that you know you don't know until you know. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I like. Let me tell you another thing, sincere, that I like about Freeway. Uh, as opposed to some of the behavior patterns of other rappers. Freeway said in an interview one time, uh, he's very conflicted with his choice of words, especially in regards to uh, his religion. He's, he's uh, like uh, he's malice, Muslim. like malice, although for Christianity. Yeah. 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 Well, they actually have the same, almost the same philosophy to a degree. But uh, what, what Freeway said, and I thought that's what, you know, he in my book, I was like, I, OK, I, I really respect this cat. I was reading in an article, it was a while ago, a long time ago, but I remember him saying that uh, he's conflicted when he makes certain music. Um, he says he enjoys the, the, you know, the natural, pure aesthetics of hip hop, but in the same time, there's an aggressiveness to him that people tend to enjoy uh, that he says, when I put these words out into the ether, or I pull them out of the ether and I put them into the stratosphere or, or just the world, he says it's out there forever. I'm going to be honest and, with you. He had more of, uh, uh, Benny Siegel didn't think about those things. But even back in the day, you know, even when Freeway first came out or even when he was involved um, 
with Rockefeller. I mean, we everybody forget he had tracks like "Victim of the Ghetto." Thank you. You know, he was definitely had a balance in there. Even when Malice was doing what he was doing, he was trying to give out that balance till he went, you know, fully into his Christian belief. But Freeway was always there. actually "Victim of the Ghetto" is one of my favorite tracks. You know, look, but, yeah. You know, he he. If you look at his discography with his albums, he always had a healthy dose of both. He had, look, he had a lot of grounded shit in his material. Look, let me tell you, so when I was going through what I was going through in my teenage years and shit, Freeway, Philadelphia Freeway was a fucking album that stayed in rotation for me. Okay? Absolutely. And, um, like, just the opening track, Free, What We Do, you know, which one with Jay-Z, What We Do, What's Wrong? And All My Life with Nate Dogg, Rest In Peace. Of course, we got Flipside with Petey Crack, which is always a jamming joint. Oh, I will say this. You was asking me about duos. Petey Crack and Benny Siegel made an excellent duo as well. And, I mean, even going around On My Own with Nelly, you go through the whole list of the track list of uh, Philadelphia Freeway. It was a dope album. So, what I'm saying is that he always had this intellectual balance. And I think people should have paid more attention to Freeway's interviews also because he was definitely grounded. He talked about making sure he was trying to stay whole. And he said he was always eternally conflicted as a MC and a rapper between what was right on the microphone and what was wrong I'm, on the microphone. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to violence and music and all that, you know, that people complain about, you know, with the Chief Keef stuff, of course, I had a, a issue with that because people were pandering, using that as the face of Chicago, misrepresenting Chicago. But Freeway, to me, I had never had an issue with his albums or his singles because it was always a balance. And those same tracks would, would get a lot of radio play as well. And then even in the, some, the, some of the stuff that would be more like the dangerous, it was very conceptual. He never wrote about it like, yeah, I'm that nigga who killed another nigga. There was always an underlining moral story to it. You know, um, one of my favorite joints off of Philadelphia Freeway is the one, you don't know, that jam right there. Y'all don't don't, don't try to get me on the singer. But, uh, yes, the one uh, featuring uh, Emilio Sparks. And uh, hear this song produced by Kanye West. He said something interesting about Kanye West prior before Kanye West began to publicly unravel. Uh, he said, you know, he was one of the first dudes to give Kanye West his break as far as putting a beat on one of their albums. And he talked about how he wasn't able to get in contact with Kanye West anymore. He just said, at the time, he said he hopes that, you know, moving forward in Kanye's career, that at least he'd be open-minded to the people that were assisting him earlier in his career. And um, he never, but he never publicly came out and was dissing anybody like that. Well, Freeway and the rest of them, like Talib, a lot of them haven't gone after Kanye or throw him under the bus. But uh, the success that Kanye West garnered, he really did push a lot of people to the side with the exception of other people who were still rising like Jay-Z and Common. Uh. You know, so uh, that is a superficial thing that a lot of people are in danger of. Do you leave behind the people who first put you on and gave you context and believed in you to live in this virtual fantasy full of insanity? Exactly. Uh, and again, his, uh, his music was reflective of uh freeway i think you know he's definitely one of my favorite rappers like i said my top 10 looks different it ain't even some of the usual suspects tupac dead or live goes without saying well you know what to be yeah. fair when it comes to tupac biggie Nas, yeah. Jay-Z, i agree with the list but so i would agree with other lists too i just don't like it because it's just the saying i get bored i'm like okay let's rearrange this because there are other rappers who are at the same level as those other guys who can be on that list. Although, mm. I understand uh, people's, uh, they are factoring in Biggie and and Tupac because we're not just talking about lyrically, we're not just talking about the musicality, we're talking about the cultural movement and force these guys had. So I know a lot of that make them automatically comes to the to the top versus people who musically are freaking crazy like mf doom yeah. or we talk about freeway or if we talk about well scarface is is interesting 
it's the same situation with MF. You better be careful what you about to say about Scarface. No, it's the same situation with MF Doom. <laughs> it's like behind the scenes, they've had that same level as a biggie and stuff about pushing people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, having them be really involved, but at the same time, because they weren't, I guess, a, like in your face, a cultural a phenomenons. People usually forget to add them on the damn list. Well. For me personally, again, like I said, my my arrangement looks different. I was saying Tupac because I I leave him out of the conversation because he's like on some Jedi shit to me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't mention Yoda as a Jedi, you just know he was the fucking truth. But now let's talk about the motherfuckers that are moving around right now. And uh, for me, you know, it, it's definitely going to be early Beanie Siegel. Uh, it's definitely going to be Scarface. It's definitely going to be people like Gene Gray. It's definitely going to be Philadelphia Freeway, like and Ghostface Killer. I'm just saying these are guys that I'll and ladies that I'll always end up going back to. So, um, like I said, I think Philadelphia Freeway, aka Freeway. Uh, I, I think he didn't get his just doing hip hop. I definitely agree. And the one last thing I would say, my personal list, what I personally like just for myself, will be completely different from mm -hmm. the list that's just the standard. But if I was going to create a standard list, I would have to put my personal taste aside and factor in what did these people bring culturally, what type of phenomenon they brought into hip hop mm -hmm. how many people do they touch globally even if it was just one album that would have to factor in uh their impact would have to factor in my uh putting them in certain levels when it when it comes to who's the greatest of all time top 10 yeah because and i will say this finalizing this like people kind of got upset at us look i i gave Meek mill his just due like i said i, I tell, know yeah i tell people all the time i enjoy dreams worth more than money that and was a fun album yeah and, and to me is as goofy as puffy's been that last joint where he's on there with puffy is a powerful record uh and i enjoyed uh dc4 but if i'm talking about artistically and we're talking about music integrity if he's claiming Philly, like he's claiming some people from Philly got matters, that's only because as an outsider, I'm judging Meek Mill by the standards of the greats such as Philadelphia Freeway or uh, a Beanie Seagull. Which he doesn't compare to lyrically. Yeah, so I'm just saying, y'all. So on that note, though, again, we're just leaving it at this. Tell us, how do you feel about Philadelphia Freeway? What were some of your favorite joints? And uh, what do you think his place in hip-hop will be? And do you feel that he had been over? Look, that is. Of course, this is the homie, Prince Solomon. And this is your girl, Sincere. All right, peace. And this is Thought Crimes. Welcome to Thought Crimes, everyone. And this is your girl, Sincere Ignorance. And I'm with. Of course, this is the homie, Prince Solomon, in the building. And welcome to our GoFundMe. Thought Crimes showcases global issues from a black perspective, focusing on the global government the Federal Reserve, police brutality, our constitutional rights, human rights, and much more. This channel is an alternative to all the other noise out there because we take black Americans' concerns seriously, in addition to being all-inclusive to the diversity of black people as a collective, when you need real commentary on serious issues that the news will never cover. Thought Crimes has your back, no hold bars. Of course, rooted through comedy, entertainment, and not giving a fuck about those with sensitive ears. Welcome to Thought Crime. I saw the check, nigga. Huh. What? Stop. Stop. <laughs> this is the real Alex Jones, as you can see. I was put into this cartoon body by a reptilian. This reptilian took over Infowars, and now I have to tell everyone the truth about my current state in order to get rid of the fake Alex Jones. Please join me as I fight for survival while still proclaiming the truth that the mainstream media frauds and young turds does not want me to tell you. Please join me here on Infowars.